Today I wanted to go through some ideas that I've had, um, and it's really taking queuing kind of uh, to a bit of an extreme. Um, this is something I've been building a library for. It's been a, a bit of a slow process, just because I've been like really trying to think about uh, how it would work in the real world. Um, so let me just kind of run through um, what you would have with a queue, um, and then I'll talk about kind of what I've been doing. Um, so, so typically, if you're doing queuing, you'll have your model defined. That's what you'll put into the queue, and then you'll have code um, working on that model. So what you'll typically have um, at some point is a method that takes the model. Um, and so that's kind of clean in terms of um, then the encapsulation of what you want to do when the object gets dequeued um, and put into a method. Now if you're looking at this method that takes the model, um, you start seeing that it actually looks a lot uh, like a web API, right? So, you know, if this is like a public method that takes a model, this could be like a, a post. And you might actually have the same method um, defined here that takes the model um, and then there's some sort of break in the middle, right, where um, in this case there's a queue. But basically in terms of how the flow goes, um, this code in essence is talking to that method through the abstraction of a queue. Now, what I've been thinking about is that this loose coupling is quite nice from a development standpoint. Um, both of these are very testable. Um, so you can test this method, you can theoretically mock the queue out, you can make sure that the wiring is the way you want the wiring to be. But I think that really what we're getting to here is what I would call um, the ability to like route within code. And by routing what I mean is, is that, that line from method to method um, where method method A to method B has a relationship but it's not a direct relationship. So this is again a broken relationship. So what we're using the queue for is actually what I would call some sort of route. So the, the ability to route data. Um, in the case of a queue, we're actually saying that uh, queue named company is the route to method B. And so that will actually go from system A to system B as well, right? So you're actually able to abstract to a level where these could be on different servers or these could be even different code languages, or you know, these can be all sorts of different things. All they have to know is the middle layer, which is the piece of communication, right? So this is where I came up with two DLLs to handle this abstraction. Um, so I have one that I call like routing. And I mean, this in a lot of ways is kind of what you see with like an ORM. Um, I mean, it's not really like a relational mapper from object A to object B, um, but what it is is um, if you called like route um, and then passed in like the string declaration um, of method B, which could be the name method B, um, or it could be like an attribute that you've, you've decided to give it a, another name, um, and pass in all the right parameters, then it will know how to call that. Um, so on the routing level, this, this would all have to be within the same system. So that's like within a system boundary. Um, and so, but, but again, I think this is really, really quite interesting because when you come in to test method A, um, you can mock out the route and then you can guarantee that method A will do the steps, call the route, and that's it, right? So that's just your simple unit test. Everything lines up well. Then you know 
that you come here and you can test this, and then all these steps will execute properly. Um, and the other nice thing that I have in the library is that theoretically you could also like multicast um, out to multiple methods. So let's do method Z. So you could have method B and method Z um, be at the same route. Now why would you want to do that? In a lot of cases um, I'm writing code where I will do something like um, I will like save an object to a database, so save the customer object to a database, but then at the same time you want to send an email to the customer. So that would be like, this one would be save a database method and the second one would be like uh, send an email method. And so in your code method A wouldn't change, this might actually be a feature that comes later, um, and you, you might want to test your route to make sure you're getting like that multicast happening. Um, but you get some nice things there. The idea here really, is that like when you step up to a car and you change the tire, um, you never think about whether you're going to break the engine or not, right? So let's just pretend this is the engine. I'm not going to care that method A is the, the caller of these methods. I'm just going to add this in, test it, make sure that tire's on, make sure the nuts and bolts are on, but not open the hood and make sure the, the engine's working on the left, right? So that's really the idea, is, is to try to get to a place where you're able to decouple your methods just enough so that it's um, not too confusing, but that you're, you're able to test really easily, you're able to add um, or just completely like rewrite methods and update them. Um, so that's what I've been doing with that. And so that's called uh, like king.route. But the real idea behind it was that with the routing piece, is I can route these to a queue. And then those will again, again they get routed at some level um, to your code. So this piece and this piece um, is what I've been explaining. Now your code would live here and your code would live here, but the idea being that um, you can actually route from your code, the router will handle this, so the queuing, there'll be a queuing router that will handle this into a queue. The route will then again be quote unquote dequeuing and then routing it to your code. Um, so that will give you that coupling. Um, and then with the queue, you get all that like retry resilience. Um, you can also see like failure rates per method. Um, you can also really get some good telemetry uh, on timings. Um, and then another big one that I'd really like to get to, which it's pretty close, but you'd be able to like scale up by methods basically um, and just have that kind of granularity um, because you would know how much throughput is going from A to B. Um, you could really start fine tuning how your system is uh, able to like scale. Um, and again, this is all like async and all that, that multi-threaded goodness is happening there and you don't really have to think about it. Um, and again, you're really just testing what I showed you in that, that first example um, where you're testing your method is going to route to this uh, route. And then the router actually handles it getting from point A to point B. If you're doing like polyglot, again, since we have the queue in the middle, you could write this in C sharp and be pulling this off in a Node.js backend or vice versa. So there's a lot of nice things to have the queue in the middle there. Um, although you will have a, a lot, a lot of queues um, if you are going to go like per method. Um, but if you look at this for the, the specific use cases that you have that are, you know, where you really want the resilience of a queue, um, it's, a, it's a really great idea, I think. Um, so this is still in kind of an alpha stage. It's all working. Um, I haven't personally run any of this in like a production environment yet. It's just unit tested um, and tested. Um, but the thing that's been getting me excited about it more recently is in Azure now there is what we call a service fabric. Um, and a, a service fabric, when you're running in production, um, you'll have a triplicate of machines. Now the reason why they do that is these machines can actually hold state, which is kind of fairly new in the Azure world in terms of having servers that are running state. Um, so this gives you the ability to have like a quorum of data. And so they're synchronizing data back and forth. 
And there's a few, few types of data that are available to you. But the big one that's interesting um, is the queue. So they actually have a queue that's being replicated between these machines. And you can do your regular puts and gets against that queue. The reason why this is nice is because if you're on this app calling this queue, you're actually on the machine calling the queue in memory, um, which gives you the performance, um, much better performance in terms of with my more generic solution, you have to go off the box, you have to fetch a message, um, and you have to do all that workflow, um, doing you know much kind of larger, more higher latency requests. Whereas this should give you much more tighter coupling. Um, so it should give you the performance much better. These machines are handling the state of that queue, so your code doesn't have to even worry about that. But within your code, you could have you know, put object, get object, route it to this method, route it to these methods, however you want. Um, and it's a really great way of doing it. The other way that I've done it too inside of MQC is just to have a, like a queue in memory. And so that's being maintained in memory, but again, that would be just within the one server. Um, so this is, this is nice to step out of the one server. Um, I'd be really curious to, to see what your thoughts on this. My biggest uh, problem with it is, is probably the latency that you'd introduce if you were overusing it. Um, but I think it's really great for a lot of simple things. And a really key area of it is, is the testability. So just really being able to keep you, ha keep you to write those really concise methods that are really testable. And if you need to like stack them, you can. Um, or you have them calling other methods as needed. Um, so I think it's a really good way to do um, that multicasting, so like one method calls two methods, but these methods don't need to know about each other. Um, it's also good if you're doing some sort of workflow state. Um, so if you have like five steps, and all of a sudden this one is having issues, um, it's really nice to be just re doing your retries in one spot. Um, so just one section of your code that's having issues. You'll, you'll know that within that queue those messages are piling up. You'll know that it's that one specific method. Um, so you can really dig into that in the debugger and figure it out quickly. Um, so these are my thoughts on these, the reason why I'm building a king.route and then on top of that king.mqc, which is a model queue controller. The idea being that it's quite a bit like MVC, only we kind of have a queue instead of like HTTP going on. Anyways, please leave me comments as usual. Uh, I'd love to hear from you and then hit me on JeffKingABC at Twitter. Okay, have a